today um my name is katie i am the social media intern um so today we have decided that we are making plum pudding so i this is actually a fairly cheap recipe um considering that uh during world war ii the food on the submarines was actually a lot better than most of the um, military because it was so such a dangerous time so they were able to have desserts and everything like that so we are making plum pudding today. Um, it actually does not have plums in it, which I learned today um, as I was shopping for the recipe. No plums at all. And I'm like, why is it called plum pudding? And I tried to find, there's a lot of different answers. None of them seem to add up. So what you will need is you will need flour, baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon, nutmeg, brown sugar. We got breadcrumbs here. <laughs> Uh, we got some chopped apples, and then the interesting thing was mixed fruit. So I guess that's what they usually meant by a plum pudding, because maybe the fruit would be plum. Basically, when we looked up other recipes, because the recipe that's directly from USS Cobia was not very thorough, um, we get like candied zest fruit. So I put this up, and this was like a little label. It said holiday fruit, so I think it will be good. Um, milk, eggs, molasses, and molasses is really, really strong, so be careful with that when you're cooking, and then raisins and mixed nuts. So, what we are going to do first is we have to sift through the dry ingredients. So this is my sifter, it just like turns like that, and I'm pretty sure this is my grandmother's for when she was cooking. But basically, I have all the mixed ingredients. The original portion size, if you have tuned into my last cooking show video, um, usually were for 100 portions because they were for men on top of, in a submarine during World War II. So my mom and I um, did the math to make a more better uh, thing, like more better measurements for you guys. So basically, in this in this little nice bowl I have right here. Um, it's about a half cup of flour, half teaspoon of baking powder, a fourth teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and then about a pinch of nutmeg or so. Measure with your heart is like I always used to say. So also if you have any questions about the recipe or about USS Kobe or anything in general, just leave a comment, I will answer you. So I'm gonna pour this into my sifter into the bowl. Um, so I don't, if you didn't turn into my other video, um, USS Cobia was one of 28 submarines that were built in the Manitowoc, Manitowoc Shipping Company um, during World War II, but only 25 of those 28 um, submarines ever saw the battlefield, or the battle ocean, I should say. Um, so that is a really interesting thing. They, it was a very, very dangerous job because you were always at risk of torpedoes or pressure buildup or just it was just obnoxiously hot environments. Also, you could smoke on submarines back in the day. It didn't really get outlawed until recently that you can't smoke. Uh, and what I mean recently, I'm pretty sure it was 2011. Don't quote me on that, but we will make sure. I'll look that up. Okay. Ah, my recipe left me. Ah, okay. So, next, basically, this is a really actually pretty easy recipe. Um, you pretty much, after shifting the ingredients, you just kind of mix them all together. So this is my shifted dry ingredients. So we're gonna dump that into the big old mixing bowl. Um, next, what we're going to add is three fourths cup of brown sugar. Okay, so I got one cup already ready. Let's dump that in there. Let's get uh, two more because that'll be three fourths cup. Um, maybe you like a little extra sugar, so measure with your heart. I always say, but the original. Original recipe always calls for like two pounds of this or like 12 pounds. Like that was, it was just an obnoxiously amount of 
ingredients because you had to feed a lot of people. So we got three fourths cup brown sugar. Let's put this down. Uh, next, we got the breadcrumbs. We also have to put that in here. So this is about a cup and a fourth of breadcrumbs. I just use the cheapest breadcrumbs I found at the store. So we're gonna dump those into our mixing bowl. I have a really nice KitchenAid right here. Next, we are going to add our chopped apples. So I already chopped them prior to making this live. Um, I tried to chop them as finely as I could, but we're just gonna slide those in there the best that we can. Oh, we still got some stragglers. <laughs> Yes, I really like apples, so, and a lot, I believe they had the ability to store apples on board because in a lot of the recipes on the USS Kobe cookbook, they used apples, so that's a really interesting. So I'm going to start by pouring these together a little bit, not too fast, just a nice slow beat, um, get them all mixed up, because then we are going to add our wet ingredients as well as the mixed Fruit. So it's not actually a mixed fruit, it's just orange zest. Um, you can get more, there's like lemon zest, there's other different zests that you can get. Um, when I saw mixed fruit, I thought it was just, you know, you'd go into the fruit section of the grocery store and there's like pineapple melon and watermelon in one of those containers. It is not that. We had to look it up to make sure that you don't know, just like join fruit in there. So next we're going to put um, some of the mixed fruit, which is actually orange zest, into our mixer. It's about four tablespoons, I would say. I'm so glad people are watching this. Um, plum pudding, I've never actually had plum pudding before. It doesn't look like pudding, and it doesn't have plums, so I'm just very confused why we had it like that. There's some leftover stuff in here. So this is all mixing. Next, we have to add our wet ingredients so that will be we got some milk we add about a cup of milk so i'm just gonna this out real quick i have my organic valley it's the only thing i really didn't measure because it's really hard to measure right before okay. Okay, let's get this milk in here Ooh, nice. And then, I'm going to add a little bit more just for safekeeping. Okay, it's getting, the mixture is getting a little mushy right now. Um, so next we're going to add two eggs. So my mom always says you have to hit them really hard on the edge to make sure they go in. And it's also good when you're cooking to clean up as you go, just to make sure, um, you know, you're making your kitchen clean and everything like that. I just washed off my hands because I really hate the feel of eggs. I never, I'm a big texture person, um, and I just have never been very good about that. So, we're making, we got a nice mush going down. Um, the other thing I forgot to do in the very beginning of this was because they did not bake this recipe, they actually steamed it. They steamed it. And um, I don't know if they had an industrial steamer on board, they probably did, but um, there's not a lot of steamers in household items, so I had to get a little creative. I looked up other recipes to see how they did that. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm filling up my pot about three inches tall it said with water and what we're going to do is we're going to start boiling it as we are making the recipe because we got to make sure it can cook thoroughly through. So I'm going to start that. And start that boil. Nice. That was a nice boil. Okay, 
So this is mixing. Let it. Our next thing is molasses, and I don't know if you guys have ever worked with molasses, but it is just not, not a great thing. It's very syrupy. It's just kind of gross all together, in my opinion. Uh, alone, it can taste very good in recipes, but alone, it's just not fun. Now. When we did the math, it called for two cups of molasses, but that just seems like a lot. So I'm only adding a cup. And as you can see, it's very, very syrupy. Like, it's taking a long time to fill up this measuring cup because it is just thick. It's very, it has a lot of sugar in it. I only picked up a mild flavor because sometimes when you make old recipes like this, it is a very strong molasses flavor and I didn't want that because I'm gonna serve this to my co-workers tomorrow and so I really didn't want it to be too molassesy. so let's get this in here oh that is so thick look at it go oh my god yeah, look, there's stuff still, like, in the cup because it's just so, so, so thick. Okay. Ooh, I smell that. <laughs> so I'm going to put that in water just because... All right, so now it's kind of like a brown, brown kind of sludge, I would say. But next, since we added the molasses, we are going to add the raisins. And where are my raisins? All right, so this is about a half cup. Get these raisins in here and we then we got mixed nuts all i have is what there's little patches so there's some walnuts and there's some almonds in here you can really use any kind of mixed nuts you want i just picked these because they were the cheapest so let's get these in here so i'm gonna turn it up a little bit just to make sure you mix it nice and thoroughly and in the meantime we are going to grease the pan. This is what I'm going to use. Usually this would be used for um, angel food cake because that is my brother's favorite when, for cakes so we make that a lot in this house. Um, but this is what we're going to use. We're going to clean up our station a little bit just to make sure that we are good to go. Let's get this cap back on. Um, so, other things with Museum News, um, if you didn't know that South Fest is this weekend, and I am very, very excited. I will be there on Sunday to celebrate with you guys. There's a lot going on. There's going to be fireworks. There's going to be World War II veterans, not World War II veterans, World War II reenactors, and then sub that it's my bad. And there's going to be vendors, there's lots of shopping you can do, as well as... Um, music and a lot of food. There's a place, it's called The Dough Shop. It sells edible cookie dough. And I'm like really, really excited for that. I gotta wash my hands because they are sticky. Okay. So, this is still mixing. Um, one second. But we gotta grease our pan. Okay. And we gotta do. Usually. starting to boil a little bit. It kind of smells good. It smells a little molasses-y. But the cinnamon and the nutmeg really help with just that in general. And also what's going to go on top of this is, it's called a hard sauce. So basically it's like sugar and orange juice and then one other thing I'd have to double check. But I will add that later after this is completely done baking. So let's check on our our buddy. Ooh, look at that. Okay. Set to mix thoroughly. And I don't know, that looks pretty good. You can see all the nuts, so let's get that into the pan. So it's, the chunks are from the nuts, but it looks nice. It's like a nice round cake. 
um, and then get that into the sink. It's very externally, it's very smooth, it's very even. The hard part is we're gonna have to steam it because I looked at other plum pudding recipes online and none of them really bake it. They just kind of steam it. And obviously steaming is a little bit harder to do than baking because you can just put it in the oven. But I have my thing. We're waiting for the stuff to get boiled. So I'm gonna bring out some tin foil. Because what they want you to do is wrap this very tight, very tight in tin foil to make sure it steams properly. This is what's going to help bake it. And when I say it's going to steam for a long time, it's going to steam for about two and a half hours or so. And the original recipe, it's only an hour, an hour and a half, but other recipes say that it's two basically it's however long it takes until you can put a toothpick on and like stick it in and you're able to pull it out cleanly that has always been my rule with baking you gotta get this nice and tight um it also like a tip is if you want it really really tight you can put a rubber band or a string to help keep it tight um but it, this is really going to be something I hope it turns out great. But you never know with recipes from the 40s. Um, so that is all I have for you guys. I will make sure I post the results of the um, cake I made. I'm still kind of waiting for the water to boil and such. So... It's still, but very easy. You just really had to mix everything. If you are looking to get the actual recipe, you can DM us at Wisconsin Maritime um, on Instagram or message us on Facebook, and that way you can get the actual recipe for it. Um, otherwise, I hope to see you guys at Subfest. If you just joined, I finished my plum pudding cake. So we got that. Oh, the dog's barking. All right, so I will show you guys the results in a couple hours, and I hope everyone has the great rest of their day. Thank you.